Hello everyone, my name's Stephanie Wilson and I'm from Suez where we specialise in water purification systems for laboratory applications. So welcome to episode two of our webinar series where we are aiming to answer some of your frequently asked questions around purified water and its applications. This episode is called Understanding Laboratory Water Quality which will take around 15 minutes with another five minutes at the end for any questions. You can submit questions in the chat function at the bottom of the webinar screen, or you can send me a private email. So we are doing um, a webinar series. So other subsequent episodes will focus on technologies used in the purification process, how to maintain your water system and the importance of changing your consumables. So if you have any burning questions around purified water, please send me an email and we will cover it in a webinar for you. Thank you for joining us today. Why is purified water so important and what is it used for? Laboratories require an inert media for the basis of any sample analysis and may routinely measure and test samples for gases, organics, minerals and bacteria, which is why these impurities need to be removed from the water. For general lab techniques such as glass washing, media preparation or reagent makeup, a lower grade of water is usually required. For techniques such as tissue or cell culturing or PCR, a higher grade of water is usually required. Laboratory equipment such as glass washers, environmental cabinets or biochemical analyzers or autoclaves also require purified water and are usually directly connected to a water system. What are the various water standards used in the laboratory? There are two commonly used water standards in the laboratory. The first standard is the International Organization for Standardization, and this is the ISO standard. And it specifies three grades of water, grade one, grade two, and grade three, where grade one is the purest. Grade is usually represented by conductivity and this is measured in microsiemens. The second standard is the American Society for Testing and Materials and this is the ASTM standard which has four types of water. Type 1, Type 2, Type 3 and Type 4 all in Roman numerals where Type 1 is the purest. The ASTM scale is represented by resistivity only. Grade and type of water are usually used incorrectly and interchangeably, so I would recommend finding out what resistivity or conductivity of water is required for an application to minimise any confusion. You will also see in the ASTM table that the resistivity does not run in numerical order across the water types. And this is because other factors are also taken into consideration. Some of these factors include resistivity, which relates to the resistance of purified water, conductivity, which relates to the amount of dissolved minerals in the water, TOC, which is total organic carbon, and this relates to the amount of organics in the water, and microbial load, which relates to the amount of bacteria in the water. Other obscure factors also include silica, for example, which is a constituent of sand. Another thing to note with the ASTM classification is that the types and their numeric characters have been assigned in order of when they were discovered and not as an indication of purity. Therefore, if the types were to be placed according to the resistivity, then type three would come before type two. 
Type 1 is considered the highest purity and is sometimes termed ultra pure water. What is the difference between type 1, type 2 and type 3 water? And this is on the ASTM scale. <clears throat> type 1 water is produced by using techniques such as reverse osmosis or distillation to purify the water to a conductivity of around 20 microsiemens. The water is then further purified, which is a term we call polishing which is done by deionization technology, which removes minerals from the water using mixed bed ion exchange resins. And then a further polishing step using nuclear grade ion exchange resin. Water is also recirculated through a UV lamp to remove bacteria and to reduce TOC, which is total organic carbon, and an ultra filter to remove small particulates. 18.2 megohm resistivity is the maximum purity that can be achieved. Type 2 water is produced by using techniques such as reverse osmosis or distillation, followed by deionization to produce water at around 1 megohm resistivity, which is the same as 1 microsiemen conductivity. Type 3 water is produced by using reverse osmosis or distillation, iron exchange in the form of mixed bed resins or EDI technology, and 0 0.45 micron membrane filtration, producing water at greater than 4 megohms in resistivity or 0 0.25 microsiemens conductivity. Again, you will see that the conductivity and the resistivity does not run in numerical order across the water types. And this is because of other factors taken into account, which I mentioned previously, and you can also see a few others mentioned in the table. Again, I would recommend finding out what resistivity or conductivity of water is required for an application to minimize any confusion. How do I compare types of water, grades of water, to megohms and microsiemens? So at Suez Water Purification Systems, we have put this simple graph together to help you compare different water types, the different water grades, the resistivity and the conductivity scale. Conductivity is the amount of dissolved minerals in the water and is measured in microsiemens. Resistivity describes the resistance of purified water. As the purer the water, the more resistant it is to conduct due to the lack of minerals in the purified water. Resistivity is measured in megohms. Generally, the more impurities the water contains, the higher the conductivity, the purer the water, the higher the resistivity. Resistivity and conductivity are reciprocals of each other, where one microsiemen is equivalent to one megohms and vice versa. So just taking values off the graph then, so type 1 water has a value of 18.2 megohms, which is equivalent to 0 0.055 microsiemens conductivity. Type 2 water has a value of greater than 1 megohms resistivity, which equates to a conductivity of less than 1 microsiemen. Type 3 water has a value of greater than 4 megohms, which is equivalent to 0 0.25 microsiemens conductivity. So this next slide just shows you which applications require which type of types of water. So applications that require type 1 ultra pure water can include tissue and cell culturing, PCR and HPLC for example. Applications that require type 2 water, which has a resistivity of greater than 1 megohms, 
can include general lab techniques such as general chemistry, reagent makeup, or media preparation. Applications that require type 3 water, which has a resistivity of greater than 4 megohms, can include chromatography, glassware rinsing, and autoclave feed. So on the left hand side of the table, you can see different laboratories. In the middle, you can see the applications and the different types of water required. And then on the right hand side, you can see our products that produce the different water types. Are there different running costs for different types of water? So the short answer is yes. If you look at the table below, which compares the cost of bottled water to in-house water production, you can see that the purer the bottled water quality, the more it costs. You can also see the same trend with in-house water production. The purer the water to be produced, the more that it costs. You can also see that producing water in-house is so much cheaper than buying in bottled water and there is also less plastic waste. If I take you back to the slide where I mentioned the difference between type 1, type 2 and type 3 water, you can see that to produce a purer water such as type 1 ultra pure water, there are more components used to purify the water. The more components in a water system, generally the more consumables have to be changed. And we will be covering how to maintain a water system and the importance of changing consumables and calculating running costs will be shown in a subsequent episode. So that brings me to the end of episode two on understanding laboratory water quality. I hope you enjoyed this short webinar and that I helped you to understand a little bit more about water quality in the lab. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, so the question here, what is the difference between mixed bed iron exchange resin and nuclear grade iron exchange resin. So iron exchange resin becomes depleted after a certain amount of time and then it has to be regenerated by using acids and alkalis and then it can be reused. So resin that is brand new and hasn't been regenerated is what we call nuclear grade resin. It's brand new, it's not been used and it removes minerals um, at a better rate than um, a mixed bed iron exchange resin which has been um, regenerated. So nuclear grade resin is new resin and it removes minerals more efficiently than the mixed bed iron exchange resin. I've got another question here. What is the difference between EDI and DI? So EDI and DI are both deionization techniques, and this is to remove minerals from the water. So deionization in a cartridge form, um, in the cartridge there are um, ion exchange resins, um, which after removing the minerals from the water become depleted after a certain amount of time. So these cartridges, these deionization cartridges have to be replaced after a certain amount of time, usually of quite a few months. EDI technology um, is also deionization technology as it removes minerals from the water. However, instead of it being in a cartridge form that has to be replaced every couple of months, EDI is in the form of a cell, which has an electric current across the cell and it makes sure that the resins are continuously regenerated. So the EDI cell is not a consumable and it should last and re keep removing minerals for between seven and ten years usually. So we've got another question here. Type 1 and type 2 are both 50 micrograms 
per litre TOC. Shouldn't type one UV lamp lower the TOC levels? So I'm just going to go back to this slide. So as you can see, it does mention that TOC is 50 micrograms per litre in type one and type two waters. And this is what the standard says. And this is the maximum TOC value that type one and type two can be. Um, yes, the UV lamp in the water system that reduces TOC and bacteria uh, will lower the TOC in the water. However, the standard says that TOC can be up to 50 micrograms per litre. So that's the maximum. So yes, the UV lamp will reduce the TOC. Does anyone else have any more questions? Okay, so... Thank you for joining our webinar today. Please join us next time for episode three, where we'll be discussing technologies used in the purification process. Um, and you can contact me to register your interest. Thank you very much.